Now, even though a lot of the 3D stuff I've been doing lately has been centered around the Repousse feature, we mustn't forget the other features, 3D features in Photoshop Extended, and one of them being the 3D postcard effect. And this is actually something that's available in CS4 Extended as well as CS5, in that you can take a layer, a 2D layer, and put it in a three-dimensional space. It doesn't, doesn't give it 3D volume, but it does put it in a three-dimensional space so you can do some rather interesting things with it. For instance, here, I have this kind of cool retro sci-fi kind of looking logo, and I want to do some interesting things with it by making each layer a 3D postcard and then merging them all together to get a very interesting result. So we're going to start the very top on this text. I've, gone again, I've got a simple bevel and emboss uh, layer style attached to it, and we're going to go under the 3D menu down here to choose New 3D Postcard from Layer. And it goes ahead and it converts it into a 3D layer, as you see right there. I'm going to go ahead and do that to all the remaining layers in this layout, which we have the two rings here, and then the cool shape in the background. So we'll go ahead and make more postcards here, all putting these into a 3D space. So again, we'll just do it through the last shape here. And just so you can see what I'm talking about, I'm gonna turn off all these layers here in grab my 3D object rotate tool. I can rotate this around in 3D space. It's not distorting it, but rather rotating it around as if it were a real object and you're just tilting it around in 3D and just like that. Now, even though each one is each uh, layer has been converted into a 3D object, we they're still on separate layers. So we actually want to merge them all together so they can interact with each other and reflect and have and cast shadows on each other and things like that, which they are unable to do when there are separate layers like this. So to merge them together, you can only merge two 3D layers at a time. Doesn't matter what they are, whether they're repose objects or 3D postcards or whatever, where you can only um, select two at a time and merge them. So I'm gonna go and hold down the shift key and select the layer just below here, go into the 3D menu and go down here and choose merge 3D layers. And no matter how many 3D layers you've got, you can only merge two at a time. So just remember that if you select three or more uh, 3D layers and try to merge them, it's not going to let you, and that is why. So I go ahead and merge the last element together here, and if I take my 3D Rotate tool and rotate this around, you can see and it spaces them uh, apart a little bit just so we can um, see where they are positioned, but they are all contained within the same 3D layer. Now they are still separate 3D objects in that if you go into your 3D panel and go into the mesh section right here, you'll notice that there each item is listed. If I can turn these eyeballs off, you can see each, it's almost like your layers panel is that each one represents a 3D object or mesh inside this 3D layer. So now what we can do is go over here in the 3D panel and grab the 3D mesh tools, which are different from the 3D object tools here in the toolbar in that the object tool rotates the whole object the mesh tools only rotate um, individual meshes within the shape or within the 3D layer. So, and it is content sensitive. So if I position my cursor over a certain object, it will rotate it around, or you can select it here inside of the panel. All right, so what I'm gonna do is rotate a few objects around here. Let's actually take, uh, we'll take the background layer. That one is the text element, and we'll take this one. Sometimes it renames your layer, so it's just a quicker to turn these layers on and off. So we're gonna select this top one up here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and rotate this object around a little bit. And to avoid the content sensitive feature, just move your cursor outside the area of the image. Otherwise, you can see it puts your cursor and highlights certain shapes. It may highlight the shape you don't necessarily want to work on. So, Go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and add the or rotate the text around here. There we go. So we can rotate that around. You can see it's cutting into the other shape. So you want to be uh, be sure to avoid that. And we'll just kind of rotate this up just like that. So I'm going to uh, rotate the rings around, and we're just going to go ahead and select that again using the 3D mesh rotate tool, and we can rotate that sh shape around giving it the effect of it orbiting around the logo here. So that's looking pretty cool. So we'll do the same thing to the red ring here. Oh, let's get that. 
There we go. So we'll just get that kind of orbiting around here. In a very different way. Giving us a very interesting result. Now once I've got all those things rotated in position, I can use the Master 3D Rotate tool. And notice what's going on here. And so we've got the shape moving around the object in 3D space. Even though they're still flat two-dimensional layers, they're floating around now in that 3D space, which was impossible in earlier versions of Photoshop. And yet we seem to have, you know, volume here, even though we haven't created any repousé objects. Now, now let's uh, mess around with some of the reflections. So I'm going to go over into the material section here, and the layer containing the yellow, the yellow shape back there, I'm going to go ahead and highlight that layer here. And then go down here to the reflection property and go ahead and increase that to around 25. And press enter. You don't see any change, and that's because we have to render the result here. So in order to see that, let's go over here into the 3D scene section and go under quality menu and choose ray trace draft. And that's going to do a progressive render of the object. And as it passes through and uh, renders it in a higher quality mode, when we get to the section where the text is here in front of the shape, we should see it reflecting in that background. There you can see it's kind of subtly showing up, and that's because we had it at a relatively low setting at around 25, so let's actually rotate that a little bit more. And also, I'm going to add a light in here. When you're working with um, 3D postcards, they don't have lights on them by default the way repousé objects do. So I'm going to go over here and generate a new spotlight. And the light did show up. It's a little hard to see, so we're actually going to turn on the light wireframe. So if you go down to the bottom of the 3D panel and go down here into this first icon and choose 3D light, it'll turn on the wireframe for our 3D light here. So we'll just kind of bring that light forward. I'm just going to click and drag down using the 3D light tools here. And we'll just pan the light up so it's shining on our subject here. So now there's a light source, so I can generate shadows. So if I go back into that quality menu and do another ray trace draft, it's going to render not only the reflections on that yellow shape that we generated, but it's also going to go and draw the shadow that would be that's being cast from these letters onto that background shape. There you can see that shadow's showing up and looks pretty good. So again, it's going to depend on the processor you have in your machine and the complexity of the 3D object as to how quickly it renders it. But there you can see it's given me a little bit more dimension by showing the shadows. So you can see the shadow being cast by the ring here onto that element. So just a, a cool way of taking simple, flat, two-dimensional elements and then putting them in 3D space. Not necessarily making them a 3D object, but rather putting them in 3D space and being able to manipulate them in ways you never could before inside Photoshop.